all right guys it is saturday and it's already past noon so getting a late start but i'm trying to come up with a plan of attack here so i want to continue doing metal work on this monte carlo uh, just because it's set in here and that's kind of what i've been doing is the metal work side of it i'm going to do some work on the firewall there's going to be some panels made uh, holes welded up there's going to be a little bit of custom stuff done i want the firewall to be really really nice looking it's still going to look stock i'm not you know cutting it all out and putting in a flat piece of metal uh, i'm going to keep the factory firewall i'm just going to kind of modify it a little bit these things are really really nasty uh it the engine compartment on a g-body it, it looks kind of nasty it's not very nice there's lots of open holes and spot welds and stuff you can see lots of stuff coming off the firewall or stuck to the firewall or bolted to the firewall you know what i mean so i want to clean this thing up and i've got a few ideas so i'm going to run you through that so i went ahead and removed most of the front clip off the car and it's basically so i can get in here but i think i'm going to have to remove the engine and trans to get to this area back here all right so i'm trying to get prepped uh, for tomorrow which is going to be sunday and it's going to be firewall work day so i got a lot of stuff planned and most likely i'm not going to get it done in one day so it's probably going to carry over to next weekend so i'm going to give you the rundown of what i'm going to do so this is a typical g body firewall stuff the way this is uh, notched out right here like it's double stepped right here this is at an angle and then curves down and then kicks over this is so goofy right here and then it has another indent up here i mean this is weird it like comes over and then back up and then down i'm gonna cut this right through here and i am gonna do rounded sides in more of a rectangle shape and sink it back I'm not sure how deep I can go. It's probably going to get shallower from right about where this is and shallower as it comes up, but it'll still have a rolled in uh, flange here because the heater box, if you've never had one of these out, on the other side of the firewall, there's a piece connected to it that comes over a little ways. So that's, it's right behind this, but I don't know how much space there is. So I can't make that super deep. And the only reason I'm changing this is because it looks so goofy. It's not symmetrical which there's really nothing on a G-body firewall, it's symmetrical anyway, but I'm just gonna try to make it look more clean. Um, lots of stuff on here is going away. <clears throat> this is a ground placement here. There's usually two grounds here. Your heater core has a little ground on it and it goes on there and there's also another ground strap that's a little bigger than this that goes, that's doubled up on here with a star washer it goes to the back of the cylinder head to ground your engine to your body. So these are going to be, this is going to be re relocated. And this, I will probably change the location on the heater core, maybe down lower and try to bring it out through a hole in the box with a rubber grommet or something. I'll figure something out. But I want it to come out and go someplace else besides having it up here where everybody can see it. You know what I mean? This hole right here is for a tack filter. It's a rubber grommet and your tack filter goes on here. And that is the screw for it right there. The tack filter goes on here and there's wire comes out of here. Then the other side goes to the distributor. This is going to get welded up. That's going to get welded up. That's going to get welded up. I've already welded a hole up there. And off the top of my head, I can't remember what that's for. I think it might be cruise control stuff. I think. I don't remember. This is an uh, accelerator cable. Snaps in right here. It's a pretty unique design. I am going to be using the stock stuff, so I'm going to have to keep this. But I'm going to try to modify this a little bit to make it look a little better. This is where the factory speedometer cable comes out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of mock-up. But I'm going to see if there's enough room for that cable to kind of turn sideways. And I might bring it out on that side over there somewhere. But the inner fender will have to go in. I'll have to set the dash up in there. Look at the back of the instrument cluster. Like mainly the speedometer and see how the cable comes out of there. I don't want to kink it coming out of there. If there's enough room, I'm going to try to relocate it and use the factory grommet, just a different placement for the hole so I can weld up this goofy monstrosity. This is like higher than this. It's at an angle, so it looks goofy. <clears throat> but I'd like to put cut this out and put a piece of metal in here so this is more 
flat, but I'll have to put something here for that cable, leave this factory spot here, but the cable be able to protrude through there. So anyway, I'll come up with something. Now on a couple of occasions on G-bodies, this is where the accelerator pedal bolts to the firewall. It's three screws in their coarse thread and they come out this way. So when you look back here, you can see the back of the screws sticking out. What I have done is welded bolts on the inside of the firewall, but I've welded them out here. I've opened this up a little bit bigger and stuck the head of the bolt from the other side to there and then welded it solid. That way your throttle pedal goes on by studs and nuts. So this is smoothed out out here. I'm gonna do the same thing in this instance. So the, these holes will disappear. Also gonna remove the nuts on the firewall where the steering column bolts to. Again, threads coming out this way. I am going to weld bolts on the back side and uh, that way the steering column will go on and it'll actually be studs on the inside of the car for nuts. So this is a pressed flange. It's just a sharp edge. It's all the way around. It's just a sharp edge sticking out there. I'm going to take some solid steel uh, rod and I'm going to bend it and contour it to where it fits right along the edge of that and I'm going to fully weld to the edge of this and to the body all the way around and then bevel grind it so this will look like it's it's more of a like a bead rolled looking instead of a stamped 90 degree flange that'll just smooth that up a little bit so another thing i plan on doing is building a cover for the uh, windshield wiper motor right here so there's linkages and stuff that goes right here for your uh, wiper arms they come up through there so I'm going to build a cover that will actually bolt onto this here on this side and on the top and a little bit down to the side. And it'll be a full cover coming across here and down, but I'll have to have an opening cut in it for the linkages to still be able to operate when they move and stuff. So I'm going to probably weld some nuts to the bottom of this flange or something. I may just drill and tap this. I don't know yet. But anyway, I'll put some little bitty tiny, probably 832 stainless steel buttons on top of here and on the side for that to bolt to. And I'll probably have to weld a little flange on here that sticks out just a little bit that I can also put a couple of bolts in. I just don't know yet. I may build a flange under here for that just to slip under to pinch it in there and then bolt down here. I just, I just got to get in here and, and get to work on it. It's going to kind of be winging it a little bit. So there's spot welds on these G-body firewalls all down through here. And it just it looks terrible. And I've seen guys go in and they've taken their firewall apart and painted it a shiny color, but they didn't go in and like fill in the spot welds and stuff and it looks terrible. So I'm going to go in and completely smooth the, all this up with filler, all them, that, you know, spot welds and stuff. Try to clean it up and just make it look clean. Um, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, but that, that firewall has got to be worked on. This is a, to me, the firewalls and the frame rails of what you see when a hood's open at a car show, that is an important area of a car to be, you know, really worked over. Uh, so, anyway, the other thing I'm going to do, I've got to cut it out of the other car. I've got a Monte Carlo SS parts car that I've been cutting metal off of. Uh, I'm going to cut this area right here out of this cowl panel, and it's going to go in here to get rid of this raised pad for a trim tag. Some G-bodies had their trim tags. Some of them left the factory and didn't even have them on there for whatever reason. This one's never had one on it. There's no uh, coarse marks in here from screws. So instead of going in here and welding these up and having this square notch with nothing there, I'm going to put on this piece here from the other car where it looks symmetrical coming across there. There's also a square indent here that I don't think it needs. So I'm going to probably cut it like this and just put a whole piece in there but that'll look more symmetrical coming across there. But I think a cover on here, getting this symmetrical and then working this main area here and getting rid of this goofiness will go a long ways when this is painted. But when this is painted, this will be nice and straight and, and flat instead of ripply and, you know, just goofy looking. Now the frame is gonna be a different story. So there's not a lot of frame rail that shows on a G-body because the way the inner fenders come in across the top of the frame edge a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix it anyway because there is an area that you do see of it. So these frames are uh, two piece. Right here you can see the seam. 
and there's a high side and a low side. And what I have done before is I've taken uh, eighth inch thick steel and I've cut pieces out that fit directly in that low side right up to the edge. I'll cut it to fit to where it fits in here perfectly. That way it levels it out and I'll fully weld all that and I'll weld that edge and then go back in and grind everything. But that'll make it level instead of trying to fill that with filler like I've seen people do. Anyway, a lot of these holes are going to get welded up that are not being used uh, because I'm not going to use some of the factory clamps. I'm going to change a lot of the brake line clamps and the fuel line clamps that to the two-piece billet specialty style because they look more street machine looking. They're trick looking over this crap like that. But I'm not doing the entire frame. I'm just going to do what you see up here. Anyway, that frame rail parts will be smoothed at the front and the rear back here. And then this, this is actually V6 mounts. These are for Buick V6. And all these holes are in these frames. So these mounts, actually the holes are already there and I just changed the mount location. Now Monte Carlo SS's obviously have a small block Chevy 305. So this is where the factory mount goes. You had these two here, one down here and the other one just hanging out in the wind. So they're actually just bolted on with three holes. What I am gonna do is I'm going to use a step bit and I'm gonna put in, weld in some flange nuts in this hole and that hole and the one down here for the small block Chevy mount. I'm also gonna do the ones for the V6 mounts. That way when I bolt these V6 mounts in, I can put some really nice ARP bolts in here instead of having threads sticking out. Then I'm gonna use more ARP bolts or some uh, button head stainless steel Allens and I might paint them the frame color and bolt those into those threaded bosses that I'm putting in here for the small block mounts. And the reason I'm doing that, in case someone down the road gets this car and they don't want a V6 Buick in here, uh, they want to put, you know, another small block back in it or a LS or whatever, big block, I won't have these welded up and smoothed away and gone. Those holes will still be there with threaded bosses. So definitely welding up the big one, welding up that one, welding up that one and this one, but the three that bolt the factory mounts on, the 305 mounts, I'm gonna retain those. I'm just gonna cap them with some bolts, basically. So, a little bit of uh, change is gonna go on here. I'm kind of debating on what to do. This is your vapor line for your charcoal canister. I wanna retain this. I'm putting the charcoal canister back in it. So what I'm thinking about doing is actually uh, making the line in two pieces. I'll probably put a union in there, flare the other end, put a union back here somewhere, but I'm gonna try to run it through the frame up into the rail and maybe out up here somewhere to where the, you know, this is not laying on top of the frame basically. I just don't know yet. I'm gonna wait until I get there. But a lot of frame work is gonna get done, a lot of firewall work done. But that's the plan for this weekend is to start in on that firewall. I just gotta kinda of figure out what I'm gonna do there. Now this heater box is junk. This thing is broken. There's chunks broke out of it. This is basically on here with one bolt and it's just to keep the cats from getting inside of it. We have a lot of cats in our housing edition and they like to get inside cars here. So I don't want them getting in there and spraying the inside of the car. So this is just sitting in there. I have another really nice non-broken heater box that's going to go in here that I'll tear apart, completely reseal with strip caulk and reseal it and put it in here. All the AC stuff, all the lines, all the stuff that I'll, I'll be putting a new dryer on obviously, but all that stuff, all these lines will get sanded and polished so this will all be brilliantly gleaming under there. So the firewall is normally black on these cars. This will be body color and I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna paint this car white or if I'm gonna paint it black. Now I mentioned it in the other video, I have a T-top Monte Carlo SS that is gonna be white so this one may go black because I don't want to own two white SS Monte Carlos. So anyway, I think I'm going to paint this car black. So if I do it black, this firewall will be gloss black. So th that's why this has to be slick is because it's going to be shiny. But anyway, the frame will be low gloss black. Uh, probably my normal where I do my control arms will be high gloss black, single stage urethane frame will be low gloss black and then some of this other stuff like the center link will be high gloss black. I like changing the shades of black on the frame so it has detail by different shades of the black. But probably going to make some covers to go on here instead of going in and welding 
this up on both sides. I'm probably just going to do a sheet metal cover to go on there. Um, this is where the computer comes through from the factory, and I already welded that up a long time ago because I was actually building this car when I first got it until I found that quarter damage and the, uh, the quarter damage on the other side, and then I was kind of done with it. But now, not a parts car anymore. I'm actually going to build it. But that's the plan, guys. A little bit of uh, a lot of welding, a lot of smoothing. Uh, that firewall is going to take a lot of work, but I want that firewall to be like when G-Body guys, you know, hardcore G-Body guys see that firewall to show, they're like, damn, there's a lot of work in that. But changing this area here out is going to be the biggest thing. Now, I had an 87 T-Top Monte Carlo SS that I had. It was a show car that I built. Uh, it was probably back in the early 2000s. And I had cut this area out here and had a piece of metal that was curved in there and just flat on the top. And that was all molded in. And then over here where the throttle cable comes out, I had a skull panel bonded on here with its mouth open and the throttle cable come out of its mouth. Now, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> that was something I did, uh, you know, back in two th early 2000s. Uh, but I don't want to put a skull there again. I'm going to do something here. I'm just not sure yet. I'm going to figure it out. Um, I probably need to go look and see if I can find a miniature turbocharger. Uh, like a, you know, something you'd sit on a desk or something. Maybe a keychain if they have a large one. And I may put something here. I, I just don't know yet. I'm going to do something pretty cool there, but lots of stuff getting smoothed on that. Well, I got the, I got it kind of marked out. But that's, that's kind of the, it gives you the idea of what I'm wanting to do. And now that I've got the, the paint kind of cleaned off of it in this area, you can really see how just out of proportion that is. Uh, really kind of strange. So, I've got to figure out how to make that. And I'm probably not going to be able to make it perfectly symmetrical. Really, all I care about making really nice is this upper section here. Because this back here is behind the engine stuff. You don't really see this part. But that has to look pretty good. And then I try cleaning off the paint around this. And i got the steel rod here that I need to clean all the paint off of and clean it to bare metal. And I'm going to shape this basically weld it up into that so I'll have to weld it to the edge of this and then weld it up here to the firewall so it'll be welded a whole bunch all the way around and then I'll go back and bevel grind it and grind this real smooth on the inside edge but the outside I'll bevel grind and it'll look like it's kind of b-roll stamped in there in a way instead of 90 degree pressed like it is I need to get these nuts off of here I'm going to try an air hammer and see if I can get these knocked loose. Hopefully it doesn't tweak the metal too bad. I need to grind. This metal here is like pushed out. And because the screws go this way for the gas pedal. So I need to grind this down flat. Open the hole up. And then I'm going to lay some bolts up in there. Hold them in place through there. And then weld it out here. And then I'll go inside and put some, some welds on the outside of the bolt to the firewall to give it some more support. But that'll end up being stud mounted. Same thing with the steering box. So the the nuts will be gone. This will be welded smooth. This will be welded smooth. So that'll clean all this up. This hole will be filled and welded up. That hole that hole will be filled ground. So I mean it'll just a little cleanup and a little reshaping of a couple things, and this should look fantastic. I dug some parts out for mock-up. Some of the stuff is extra. Some of it I'll use, some of it I won't use. Uh, let's see, I've got, in case you G-Body guys don't know this, this is definitely unique for a turbo car. The throttle cable, this is the part that goes to the carburetor. This goes to your throttle pedal. It goes in here. Uh, this is turbo V6 early carbureted. The way that uh, has a big end on it and it's a really short cable so that's a pretty unique little part for a, a g body to use the v6 stuff so i'll have to put a a special uh, pivot on that on the carburetor linkage which i have i'm not too worried about so 
uh, this is the wiper motor here and what I was trying to do was figure out how to make it 12 point ARP that takes uh, this style of bolt and it's actually got a countersink in it right here and these these sleeves it's like a washer with a sleeve that goes in it is, is actually almost countersunk to match this but the bolt itself is pretty sloppy inside there so what I think I'm gonna do is change this to quarter inch and just basically drill it and tap it to take a quarter inch bolt that way it'll take the slack out of it and it fits a little bit tighter in their factory sleeve I dug these out of my 12 point ARP box of spares but they're too short I need some a little bit longer but anyway that'll have 12 point ARPs in it as well and it mounts right here on this flange so anyway I've got there's going to be quite a bit involved to change out to ARP bolts but to me the ARP bolts is one of the biggest details on, on a custom car to me so I've got the wiper linkage set back up in here but I don't have it bolted in yet the part that the the bolts go into on the wiper linkage is plastic so it takes a funky really coarse thread looking screw or bolt and I don't want to use them obviously I want to use 12 point ARPs so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these and helicoil them and use a standard thread bolt because I have so many 12 point ARPs extra from my 55 hardtop build so these will get changed out to ARP so it's going to be a little bit involved to have to helicoil six ports but it's not that big a deal it's plastic it'll it'll work pretty easy anyway these cars have uh, windshield washer system and it's basically plastic stands uh, the one that goes over here is this one it just has a locator pin and one bolt hole and then over here it takes a little metal plate that screws down to this but I don't have my leaf screen out here I don't really need it I'm just working on this channel so um, what I was trying to do on this mock-up part was I'm trying to figure out uh, exactly what all I need to change and I'm glad I'm mocking this up because this is just a hole in the firewall. This also takes a coarse style sheet metal screw. But when you stick it in there, they got it in there crooked. Like it's it's really crooked. It shouldn't be like that. It should be straight. So I am going, going to weld up this hole and redrill a new one. And I'm actually gonna put, I could put a nut under there. There's probably room. The wiper linkage runs under there. But what I'm going to do is open this up with a step bit, the new hole, and weld in a flanged nut. That way it sits in there level and I can weld it in and then grind it. It's, it's level and it has a, basically a nut in it. But a quarter inch ARP bolt will fit in there. So these will have quarter inch bolts in those. Uh, I'll have to look at the other side to see how I'm going to mount it. I think it takes, it's a metal plate, but I just need to look it over. I haven't done that yet. So the other thing I was wanting to figure out was why this square indent is in this rain gutter here. And it's not necessary. It just, just takes a screw right there to hold that on. This does have uh, resting stops for the wiper arms, but they go down here. And that's what I was thinking that was for. Maybe that resting stop went in there, but it doesn't. So this square is not really necessary so when I cut this piece out of the other car I'm going to cut it to fit in here to get rid of this raised square piece and that sunk in spot so this will look more symmetrical anyway I've got this pretty much figured out how I'm going to do it and I'm going to be helicoiling those for the wipers the other thing is the cover that I want to build to put on here I want to cover this up because you see the wiper motor protruding you know through here and your linkage pretty much hangs up here kind of like that i think it's ugly to look at so i'm going to build a cover to go right here and they're probably going to have some little screws little tiny maybe some 632 or 832 stainless steel allen buttons to go in there because they're low profile and they almost look like a you know a little rivet or something but i'm going to put a partial side on this because it does have to clear the linkage i don't want just a a top plate on here I want it to look like it has some 
detail coming around the corner. So anyway, this is angled and I'm gonna make it where it's a little bit more straight on my piece. So I'll have to weld a little kick bracket in here to, to put a screw into. But anyway, I'm getting, getting a rundown of what I'm gonna do. Now, the other thing I wanna do, and luckily I had one left over. This is the bump stop for the hood. It's actually an adjustment for the center of the hood. And if you G-body guys have a squeak coming from under your hood and you can't figure it out, it's that rubber bumper on the bottom of the hood. You need to put a little grease on top of that little rubber bumper. But I saved this from when I did my cutlass salon. Oh good, there's a stock one in here. So I can show you before and after here. So this is the Ring Brothers black uh, hood adjustment. And it is gonna go in here in place of this factory one so that's what goes in there and i'm changing it out to the ring brothers because it looks really really cool and uh, i do have the uh the the nut that matches with the little speed hole looking things that goes on here as well so i'll be putting that on there but i will have to change uh, the threads out on this because i believe these are metric i'm not 100 percent but uh Seems like all I did was redrill it and retap it or something. Yeah, it's metric. It's not meshing in this one. So I'll just run a tap through there and make this, because Ring Brothers don't make these hood adjustment bumpers in metric, they're only in standard. So. Anyway, that really neat little adjustment bumper will be there. That's really nice. That's just a little detail nobody will ever notice, but I know it's there. Well, I had a bunch of leftover 12 point stainless steel ARP from building my 55 so there's kind of a you know all kinds of sizes and stuff in there this is all stainless steel 12 point ARP bolts and there's a couple of packages that haven't even been opened and then there is uh, some of the stuff I kind of already went through there and I found some things that will work on the V6 on the turbo V6 like that's the motor mount bolts and the nuts and it's all 12 point so it was really nice having spare stuff that way i don't have to buy a whole bunch more extra bolts so what i decided to do was change out the stuff to arp up here and this will look this will be a really awesome detail so i had originally planned on the housings uh, that come up to the bottom of the firewall here they take a really coarse style screw thread because it's plastic. The uh, the transmission piece or whatever you want to call it is plastic or nylon, I'm not sure. So what I decided was I was gonna helicoil those and I don't have any helicoils here, I'd have to buy some. But what I thought is I would go ahead and try to drill it and tap it to a coarse thread. So this is quarter by 20 bolts and I think these are three quarter inch long and I only had three of those. So I went ahead and drilled it and tapped it and I tightened the living crap out of them bolts to the point where I thought it would strip because I thought if it stripped, you know, putting a lot of tension on it, I would helicoil it anyway. But I don't think I need to helicoil them. I think that's gonna work. So the plastic is about that wide and those bolts, you know, go all the way to the end of it. So it's got a lot of threads being utilized a lot of surface area on the thread, we'll say. But I only had three of those bolts, so I need to get another a little five pack of those. So I had one extra quarter by 20, but it's only half inch long, which ain't really long enough. So I drilled and tapped these three as well. And I just put one in there just to, just to hold it. But you can get an idea of putting the 12 point ARPs in there, how cool it looks, if you're into that kind of stuff. I, I like it. I just think it's a, a nice detail. So as I dug through the box, I found two half inch long, quarter by 28 fine thread, uh, 12 point bolts. And I only had two of them. So I, I drilled and tapped this drain gutter here. This metal is actually pretty thick. It's thicker than the, like the car sheet metal, which I was glad to find that out because you can drill and tap that to fine thread and it'll hold just fine. So I drilled that to quarter 28, put, a, put the ARP bolts in there to hold this. I had to alter the hole a little bit so this would straighten up because when they drilled it and put it in there they had it crooked so i drilled and tapped the the panel on the body up here these three up here 1032 
That's the smallest twelve point ARP you can get is a, is a number ten. They have a twenty four coarse thread, and they have a thirty two fine thread. So in the sheet metal, I'm going to do fine thread, but in the in the plastic uh, stuff, I'm going to do coarse thread. Uh, it's just kind of playing off the way they did it uh, on the plastic. They have a really coarse style screw. So. I went ahead and drilled and tapped the bolt up here, or the hole, the nut that's already in the body for the factory hood adjustment bumper that is metric. And so these Ring Brothers hood bumpers, this is a 5 16 18 thread. Now I had forgot until I dug this out. They make these in short and tall. And this is the tall version, so it has a really deep stem piece right here. So the base of them are really tall as well. This should go on to the body in place of this one. So I had these two left over from some short ones, and this is just aluminum. These are anodized, uh, the black up here. So I'm not sure. I'll have to wait until the hood's on and adjust on this to see how much room I have. So if that can go up pretty far, I can go ahead and use the factory nut. If not, I'm going to use this low profile one and I'll just probably paint it black or I may just take some black on a brush and just dab it down in these little indents uh, that way it have a little polished and black on it I just don't know yet that's a long way down the road before I finalize this deal so anyway I have that I'm glad I had that extra because I only need one on this car so that, that worked out really really good this one can go in the parts box and can be used down the road on something else I actually it's it's kind of nice I'll probably use it on the t-top car it's gonna be original so I went through here looking at the uh, heater box. And again, I'm not using this heater box because it's just broken to pieces and ruined. Uh, I've got a really mint box in my shed that I'll be using. Anyway, this takes, you know, a coarse thread style screw because it's fiberglass or plastic or whatever the heck it is. I think this is plastic and I think this is fiberglass. I think. I'm pretty sure that is fiberglass actually. Who knows? But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so I need some uh, 1030 or 1024. I'm going to do coarse thread. I'm going to do 1024, and I'm going to I need to pull one of these out and see how long it is because they have a really they got to go in a long way. So I want to utilize as much of a, the threads as I can. So whatever length that is, that's the length of those 1024 ARP 12 points I'll get. So I'll have to drill and tap the box as well. So. I did one, I'm gonna do that spare bolt. I have a spare, what the heck did I, there it is right there. So I have a 1024 here, and this threaded boss here is cracked, and of course this box I'm not using. This boss was good, so I drilled it and tapped it 1024, and that is what'll be pretty much going in there. But I can, I can take that all the way down and it tighten up real tight. So, anyway, I'll have 12-point air piece up here. These need to be half inch long for the screen piece. But the ones that, for the lid to the main box, these are going to have to be probably three-quarter or even one inch. I need to get one of those out and check it. Then you got to look at the blower motor body goes on here. And this has five holes in it with bosses on it. So these will have to be drilled to 1024. And most likely these will take half inch. Then there's these two here holding in this. Those two there holding in that. And there's a little bracket that goes here. But everywhere these bolts are, uh, these factory ugly screws, I'm going to change them out to ARP. So I'm going to make them work. I'll just drill and tap or do whatever I need to do to make it work. So I'll also be changing it out on uh, this bracket here because I am putting AC on the car. So this will most likely get a square nut welded to the back of it, and I'll put an ARP bolt in here. So what I'll try to do is I'll find one that hopefully I have a, just a extra one laying in there that will actually fit, kind of, and I'll make modify that bracket, make it work. But that is the that little stuff like that. That is what that's what makes my day. This is what makes me enjoy what I do on these cars. I love changing things. But I like to change it out where it's subtle. I like subtleties. But this will work really, really nice, man. It, uh, I think it'll be cool. 
I kind of can't wait to cut this area out and put this piece here in. So this is a wiper stop. The arm rests on this. And I've got the 12-point ARP in there. Now this is what it took stock. It's just a, it's a self-drilling little screw here. And, you know, it's just, it looks cheap to me. I don't like it. So I think the 12-point ARP looks better. So I'll give you guys a fellow G-Body guys a tip here if your wipers and your g body when you turn your wipers off and the arms are up here on the windshield they're not coming down and parking all the way flat this is an adjustment right here see these two nuts so what it is is this is getting worn out from years of use and it just needs to be readjusted so you'd loosen these nuts off and you'd grab this arm and you would take it that way take it toward the outside of the fender and then tighten those nuts up and that that'll adjust that to where they it'll pull them wiper arms down on the stop so that is slotted that is an adjustment and that's how that's done all right guys this is the final result kind of because I don't have enough bolts, I'm going to have to order a few packs of each of some miscellaneous size of these 12-point ARP stainless steel bolts. But it uh, it took quite a while to do all this and figure it out and, you know, drill and tap and change things. But to me, it'll be worth it, especially when all the nice new paint goes on sometime down the road. So this is the Ring Brothers hood adjustment bumper, and I had forgot... They actually have two different designs. They have a tall one and a shorter one. The shorter ones have these smaller, like this bare aluminum uh, nut right here. And the tall ones has a tall top piece here, which is what this is. This is an extra tall that I had. And that's the base nut. So I don't know if, if this is too long or too short. So I dug through my stuff and I have a lower from another set that I had of the raw aluminum ones so i've got the short one and i've got a tall one but i'm gonna have to wait until the hood's on and you know to see which one i need but at least i have both of them just in case but i ended up drilling and tapping this to 5 16 by 18 to fit the ring brothers hood adjustment bumper and that is a stark difference in detail from a factory one right here so anyway this will go on my t-top 87 because this is in really nice shape but that is what's going on in this car it's going to be more of a you know modern style street machine look uh, going for real high quality detail under the hood and stuff so i was planning on healy coiling the plastic uh, transmission wiper transmission brackets here these are nylon or plastic up under here that the bolts go in and from the factory they have these really coarse gnarly things uh, so I thought, because I don't have any Healy coils for quarter by 20, which is what size these ARP bolts are. So I decided I'd go ahead and drill and tap these quarter 20, and I'm just going to see what it, see how much torque it would take. And I did, this bolt here is too short, it's just a spare, but I had three of these, I think they're three quarter inch long. I had three of those, so I'm going to get, have to get another pack of these, but when I tightened these down, I gave them a pretty healthy heave ho and they didn't strip out. So I don't think I need to Healy coil these either. I think these will work just fine. There's actually room to put nuts under there. So you could actually put really long ARP bolts and put nuts under there if you didn't want to hassle with all the drilling and tapping. But I did it that way. So I went ahead and drilled and tapped all six ports. And then I had one quarter 20 here. It's just, I think it's a half inch long and that's what I put in that one just to hold it. But. So uh, the other thing I did was I figured out that this cow panel, or this rain gutter, whatever you want to call this right here, this is actually thicker steel than the body. I just assumed this would be the same gauge sheet metal as the body, and it's not. This is a lot thicker. So uh, I drilled and tapped the existing hole that was in here to quarter 28, and I had two short quarter 28 bolts in the 12 point, so I had enough for that one, which I just drilled and tapped this panel, and it bolted down right on there. The other one is a steel bracket that bolts on to the plastic top for the heater box. So this one is thin sheet metal. So drilling and tapping this, it probably wouldn't have held. It would have probably stripped as soon as I tightened it. So I actually welded a quarter 28 nut 
on the bottom of it. So there's a nut welded into the bottom of that. So that other quarter 28 that I had bolted on there. So now I can take these components off and put those in a Ziploc bag and that part's done. So I drilled and tapped the heater box bosses. I'm not using this heater box, I'm just for mock-up. But I had two 10, 24 ARP 12 points. So I drilled and tapped the heater box to check those. And same thing, I torqued the living crap out of those just by hand, not with a torque wrench. But I gave it a lot of heave-ho and it never did strip it. So that I don't think, I think these bolts, these coarse thread ARP bolts in this plastic is gonna be just fine. I mean, it's not like this has tension on it. You know what I mean? It just bolts down there with this thin sheet metal bracket and holds that plate piece of plastic on. But there is a screen that goes here and I just, I, it's in my shed. I just don't, I didn't need to get it out. But anyway, I think that looks really nice with them 12 point ARP stuff in there. It's all made it matching up and it looks really nice. Now on this thicker metal panel, there is three screws that go in here in the steel. I mean, there's more that goes in over here too. But this is the factory style screw. It's just a self driller and it's not very nice to look at. And that's what goes in here. So I drilled and tapped the, this part of the body out to 1032. This is not tight, it's just sitting on there. But I drilled these three 1032. Now there's two little steel brackets that bolt to the studs that are on the, the cowl up here. And I need to find those. I know I have them, they're just in a box somewhere. But those will have to be drilled and tapped to 1032 as well. But uh, basically, if it's going in metal, I'm using 1032 fine thread. If it's going in plastic or fiberglass, I'm using 1024. So uh, I need to figure out the heater box situation. Uh, this has nuts welded in the body for the really coarse sheet metal style screws that go in here to hold the box on. These are obviously going to get changed to 12 point ARP. So I need to get this box out of here and look at these nuts and see what I need to... The hole in this is giant and this is filled with strip caulk or butyl basically. So I can go very large on bolts here if I need to. But I'm going to dig through my stuff and see what I have. See if I have enough to do that. And I'll just do it accordingly whatever size it might be. I started to bend on it. And I'm going to have to cut it here and section it and make it thinner. Just cut a piece out. Because I got that side, that corner, top corner on the right done, and then I got this left corner done. So I'll just probably make it in pieces and then just weld it all together, but I'm going to weld the outside edge and up at the firewall up here, and then I'll bevel grind the firewall side and then just regular grind this out here. But when I'm done, this will be nice and rounded and look more like a bead roll than a, just a choppy looking way it is. So. I'm pretty excited about that. That, uh, I mean, no doubt this is gonna take a lot of hours, but who the hell else is gonna do that kind of stuff? You know what I mean? But I've said it millions of times on my channel, I got more time than money. And this stuff right here is what I really, really love to do. I love doing this detail stuff. I love making stuff stand out. But the thing that I like on my when I build a car is I like to kind of play off originality. I don't like going in and painting all kinds of stuff, crazy colors. Cause you got to think about it. When you open the hood of a car, your car's at a show or anybody's car for that matter. And you walk around and you look under the hood. If there's something different colored or bright colored, that's what your eyes are going to be drawn to. And a lot of people put on like red spark plug wires with a black engine compartment. That's the first thing you're going to see is red spark plug wires. So, I will not be using red spark plug wires on this car. They will be black. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to do some really trick stuff to that firewall. It'll be really nice. But I think right now I'm going to go ahead and start breaking some of the stuff down. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the heater box out, figure out what size threaded holes are in, the threaded nuts are in the body for that heater box, and then go through my ARP 12 point spares and see if I have anything. I'm kind of thinking I probably don't. I'm a little short on quarter by 20s and stuff right now, but this car is most likely going to be metric because it's mid 80s. Well, here's the nuts that are welded in the body for all the bolts that go in the heater box. And what to do with it? There it is right here. So here is what the factory looks like. And when I look down in there, it actually looks like 
a threaded nut that wouldn't take something like that so as far as I'm concerned I can drill and tap this to whatever size I want as long as it's bigger than that so that's exactly what I'm going to do I just need bolts that are about that long so I'll have to measure this out under head length and see what it is and match it up with some ARPs so I'm looking at this bracket here this holds the dryer on and it has two screws that hold it to the box over here and it's actually on a little pivot this thing's actually bent but I can straighten it I may have another one of these in my spare parts but this also has a ground strap which is highly corroded now but this goes over to the uh, back side of the fender the front fender that goes up here goes to the back side of it so this grounds this bracket um, but there is a lot of customizing that can be done on this as well like welding a nut to the bottom of that and putting a nice ARP bolt in there and then I'm going to weld a nut to the back side of that bracket and put a nice ARP bolt in there it's kind of sky's the limit so one thing I was kind of curious about is this ground that goes to the heater core this is so you don't have electrolysis in your cooling system I guess anyway but this originally it's you can see where it goes on right here and it just that's all that is, just a long ground strap. It's a little bitty eyelet here and a bigger eyelet here, but it grounds the firewall right here. And there's usually another ground strap that's kind of very, very similar to this one that double stacks on here and goes to the back of the cylinder head, which I'm not gonna have that stuff up here. I'd rather move it down lower or maybe down on this flange or something. So this one, what I'm looking at is I can route it in on this side. There's no door any, uh, you know some kind of blend door or anything that could get into this and get tangled up on it but I think I'm just going to exit this out the box put it on a stud because there is a plastic of course your your panel goes across here your, that your wiper set on and then there's a plastic panel that goes on here so you won't see this but I think that would be a great place to to hide that but I don't know I could also put a little screw right here and on the bottom of that, maybe put it there. I just, I don't want it hanging out here. I want it kind of hidden. So it's most likely going to go something like that. I'll put a star washer on it so it bites into the metal real hard. But there's some brackets that go here for the, uh, these have to be off to get the box out. There's a short one and a long one. I've got them. They're in a bag somewhere in my shed, I think, which I've got parts cars. There's probably... Some sitting out there on some of them cars I could walk right out there and take them off of right now. So I took the lid off and the, the lid's over there. So if you've never seen the inside of a G-Body heat and air conditioning box, this is kind of what they look like. So if you got an AC car, this is what it looks like. If you got just a non-AC car, it looks completely different than this. But you can kind of see the where the blower motor sets, the way it gets its airflow. And it's it's a pretty unique, pretty unique little deal. There's a a door right here there's nothing left of the seal on that but another spot that's common to break this has been broken somebody's put a piece of metal on there so this is modified this is a blend door here but anyway again i have another box that's really 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 nice so i'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and figure out what i'm gonna do on them threads and see what kind of rp bolts i can put on the main heater box all right pretty interesting stuff when you dig in and start looking at this stuff so these holes in this heater box like this whole corners broke off uh, that's a pretty large hole and what it is is for adjustment you know so the whole this you know stuff lines up they have metal sleeves in them um, which I think is pretty interesting I've already got a new seal for the firewall for this Anyway, so that, that metal sleeve goes into that box from the back, and that's a large hole in there. So, what did I do with that bolt again? You can see from the size of that, that is a pretty stark difference in size for that. I mean, look at that. Look how big that is. Hot dog down a hallway. 
So when you look at the top plate that goes on there, these top ones are what goes on the, you know, the top piece of the firewall. And they have the same size nuts, square nuts welded into the body all the way around. It's the same size all the way around. And they take all of this same screw, same size and same length and everything on the perimeter. But the holes in here are smaller than those. So I think that's pretty interesting. So what I think I'm gonna do, since the hole is so large, is I think I'm gonna use quarter by 20 ARPs on the top. I think I'll use quarter by 20s on the top. And on the main part of the box, all the way around the sides and on the bottom, I'm gonna use 516s. Of course, these are they, both of these are too short. This is just what I have here to go off of, just to kind of look around at stuff. But that 516s bolt fits in there and fills the hole. The head, that flanged head, you know, hides the that giant hole pretty good. And it still has adjustment. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So the, the 516s bolt, it doesn't really, I mean, it fits in there, but it's, it's there's no, no room for adjustment. And just in case they're off a little bit, I don't really want to take the chance. I don't mind having quarters up here. You don't see these. These are not visible when the hood's up. All of this is hidden, so I don't really mind at all having a smaller bolt in the top, like no one's ever going to know anyway. So that's, that's the plan. I'm going to need four quarter by 20s uh, and whatever length these factory bolts are under head length. And then I'm going to put 5 16 18 on the others. So what I need to do is go in here on the firewall. And I need to drill and tap these. I almost busted my ass. You guys would have laughed. I'm going to drill and tap these accordingly. But when you're looking at these, the quarter by 20, it almost fits. So I'd imagine when I run the drill bit through there, it's probably going to go through pretty easy. These are most likely a, you know, coarse thread just so it'd be more easy to, to get going, but I'm gonna put a regular bolt in it and call it a day. So these up here that are not visible are gonna be quarter 20. The rest of these are gonna be 5 16 18. So now I need to dig out the drill and taps and get started. Well, I got the uppers. Uh, drilled and tapped, which the drill bit went in there kind of easy. So a quarter 20 was kind of the perfect size for that. So these are a little bit tougher uh, to to tap. And I think it's because my tap is about 20 years old. I think I just need to break down and get a new one. So anyway, I've got some NICs on there uh, trying to help out because it, I don't want to break it off in there. But you know, I drilled and t drilled these all to 5 16 all these lowers and I tapped that one and then I started on this one and I decided I'd probably just better get a new tap so instead of going over there today and getting one I might do that tomorrow morning but I moved on to the box itself and again I'm not using this box because it's broken to pieces but I am going to use some of the pieces because they're in good shape this bracket here this main big bracket uh, bolts on up in here so that'll have ARP 1024s in it. I'll have to drill and tap all those holes in the box and the new one, the nice one. So this, uh, I drilled and tapped it to quarter 28. I actually found one more of those down in the bottom of my uh, box of spares. This one's actually kind of short, but it worked out perfect for that one. So that'll have an ARP and that's the clamp for the dryer is what that is. And then this little piece that goes over to the box lid which goes right here this will have 1024s in it but this had a rivet in it so I ground the bottom of it removed the rivet and I used a 1032 with a stainless nylon lock nut on the back so I, I'm assuming that the, they made that to where it's got a little bit of adjustment in it so I think that nylon will be perfect for that as a replacement now that's the only 1032 bolt i have on the place for a spare so i am going to have to order some of those but i went ahead and drilled and tapped 
this piece here of the bracket for the clamp for the, the little tube here and also the ground strap but I went ahead and I put a just so I wouldn't lose track of how it goes I've got a stainless steel allen button 1032 that I had spare I just stuck in there but this will be a 12 point ARP but so all that little bit of stuff that changing of that that'll be really cool I'm enjoying this man this is uh this is pretty fun because I'm changing it, the hardware and to something a little bit you know more detail oriented looking but I'm having a lot of fun uh, doing that so uh, I guess I'll get back to the firewall I guess I'm pretty much about as far as I can go but I can go ahead and put this in the box of goodies because that is pretty much done other than blasting them and painting them I actually tell you I just thought of this actually as I walk away <laughs> oh that look killer man so I'm just gonna paint this bracket uh, probably like a satin black this bracket here and also this one because I don't want them standing out I'm not painting these some crazy color that's gonna stand out and everybody see a bracket bolted to do a black heater box um, this dryer, the new dryer, will be polished, and that clamp goes around that dryer. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to drill some speed holes in here. Because when that's bolted on there, you'll be able to see that polished dryer through them speed holes. I think that would look cool, man. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill some speed holes in that. Yeah. More work but really cool when it's done all right guys so i went ahead and speed hold the bracket here for the dryer uh, what i did was i went ahead and used a just a regular old nut and bolt and i put it around the original dryer because i'm going to be replacing it anyway and i tightened it down then i drilled it so it kind of held it in place well while i could drill speed holes in it but i think it looks pretty cool man that <laughs> uh gave it a little bit of detail so it has this bracket spot welded to it, and I didn't want to drill speed holes in that, obviously, so, you know, it'd come apart. Uh, I did round a corner right here. This was a sharp 90, so I went ahead and rounded it off and filed the edge so it's nice and smooth. But those are evenly spaced one inch apart, and I used a chamfering bit in the drill and chamfered them so they look like miniature dimple dies in a way. I think it looks cool. So what I did was I used a Scotch-Brite around the bottom of this old original dryer just to kind of give you a visual of, of what it will look like. If I can do this one-handed, that'll give you an idea what it looks like with the, the shiny aluminum coming through there. So when I buy a new dryer, they're pretty shiny, but I'm gonna polish it to where it looks like chrome. And so that'll look really, really nice through them speed holes on there. But. I don't know just I like that little detail stuff like that you know I spend hours doing that stuff but it just to me the details is where it's at and that's I just love doing it but uh, yeah, it's too hard to do one-handed anyway you get the idea got the bracket speed hold so I went ahead and made a list of bolts needed and I got the list wrote down with the silver sharpie on the windshield. Is this going to get a new windshield in it? This has got wiper marks in it. That's that's supposed to be dark shaded. This is bronzed out. It's just faded out up here. But uh, I had never have finished tapping that. I'm going to get a new 5 16 by 18 tap tomorrow because that one's just it's so old, man. It's dull. It's just not doing very good. I think I'm going to go ahead and clean up my mess and get all this stuff put back in a box tagged and bagged and uh i think i'm gonna be done for the night i go in and watch a movie or something but i don't know if my wife's gonna make dinner or if i have to make it just have to wait and see thanks for watching